button and throw us some money so we can pay some bills. I want to tell you about some stuff that's coming up this week, and then we will get started with the show. Uh, before I do announcements, though, I would like to introduce you all to my guest. His name is James Brooks, and he's the manager of Cultivate Wellness. That's in the, is it the Midlothian Station Shopping Center? Yes, it is. Um, Good evening. Oh, thank you for having me. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. Yeah, of course. So what we are really going to be talking about tonight um, is we discovered that you, there's this shop and we were curious about it, um, you know, because we've seen kind of a lot of head shops kind of coming around um, and this seemed a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And um, and as it turns out, you guys are doing something that's like really providing a lot of education. To Correct. the community, um, and so that is what inspired me to invite you to come in tonight was to share that information with our listeners, so that folks can start learning about um, the uh, healing properties um, that are available through either CBD or THC, um, and we'll also talk about you know the legality of different things. Um, we'll break it down. I'm. We'll get further into that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but I am going to start off with some announcements. So first of all, coming up, um, actually, what is today's today? Today is the 13th. Um, and so this is what today is. Tonight is one of your registration. Nope, it's over now. It ended at seven o'clock. Uh, so um, May the 15th by Wednesday of this week, if you would like to take a citizenship test preparation class, it's $40 for the semester and includes mock interview tutorials. They meet on Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. or 10 a.m. to noon. Um, they have classes starting on May the 20th, and they will run through June the 29th. Again, you need to register by May the 15th, and that is two days from today. If you are interested in doing so, the telephone number is 804-230-4399. You can also contact the Sacred Heart Center at shcrichmond.org. I have some other information available um, that I picked up. It is the Greater Richmond Regional Street Sheet, and they have copies of it at the Downtown Library, and it provides a great deal of information for anyone who is homeless or is facing losing their housing. Um, there's a crisis hotline, and I want to give you that number first. It's 804-972-0813. Um, and I want to give you an email address as well. Uh, there are lots of outreach, lots of um, pieces of outreach available, um, talking about indoor community meals that are served around the Richmond area um, all week long. So that information is available, um, as well as other resources. So healthcare services, crisis intervention services, reentry services um, for adults leaving incarceration, supportive and recovery services for adults um, reentering the community. Um, or uh, dealing with substance use disorders. Um, uh, let me see, and the um, also information for uh, veterans, homeless veterans, and um, I've got contact information for the City Department of Social Services. Anyway, there's a ton of information and resources available. These are great little sheets. Um, we are keeping the information here. We will find a way to post it either to the website or our Facebook page to share it with folks. Again, um, if you or someone that you know is homeless or will be losing their housing within the next three days, there is a crisis telephone number to call, and it's 804 972 0813. Next up, um, there is an addiction recovery support warm line. And I think they call it a warm line because it's not 24 hours. It's darn close, though. It's open from 8 a.m. until midnight, seven days a week, and it's called Alive RVA. If you need someone to talk to about treatment resources, peer recovery, housing, food, health resources, and recovery support, don't go it alone um, and call 1-833-473-3782. I have information about your very own WRWK 
93.9 FM, talking a little bit about our um, programming that we have available to you. Um, I'm sure you are familiar, uh, for those of you who are regular listeners, on Sunday afternoons, Jay Tubb comes in and he does a program called Citizen Voices, um, and he has been doing amazing coverage for us on... Uh, keeping up with what's happening with both the Atlantic Coast Pipeline and the Mountain Valley Pipeline. And he's really been um, out there getting to a lot of the meetings and a lot of the protests um, and getting out there and talking to some of the protesters, some of the tree sitters, um, even spending time with folks that are um, bringing action in West Virginia and other states. Um, so that's a great place for information if uh, you wanna get further involved um, with some information, some environmental information. His show is a great resource for that. Of course, my name is Stephanie. This is In the Frequency of Hope. You're listening to it. Uh, and I'm here every Monday night doing the same thing, talking about something a little bit different. Um, to, on Tuesday evening, Sarah West Love is here from 7 to 9 o'clock. On Wednesday evening, uh, Leslie is here. Uh, every other Wednesday, excuse me. She's here from 7 to 8 o'clock with her human equal rights. And this week will be um, a show that is honoring mothers, um, obviously, after Mother's Day this week. On Thursday mornings, uh, Lisa Linnell is here with Richmond Business Babes, where she um, interviews local women who are business leaders or nonprofit leaders and talks to them about how, um, how they achieve their success and what information they want to share with the community. Um, this Friday, very exciting for us. You know that we love getting out into the community and bringing you guys live information and stories. Uh, so this week on um, Friday, which is May the 17th, we're actually going to be in, uh, <laughs> thanks for pointing that out, uh, we are going to be um, in town. Um, the Poor People's Campaign is coming through Richmond again. Um, with a march with Union Hill. Um, for those of you following that pipeline story, you know that that compressor station is going to be built in Union Hill, which is downtown Buckingham. And um, in February, we went out and we simulcast an event when um, Dr. Reverend William Barber and um, Karenna Gore and Al Gore came to town. Um, they were due back this week. Uh, Reverend Barber is not able to make that trip. However, his son will be here. So William J. Barber II will be here um, along with Karenna Gore and the Poor People's Campaign. And here's what's kind of crazy cool, guys, is they're going to be doing a big march across the Lee Bridge um, after having collected in the park over in Union, uh, Canoe Park over in Oregon Hill um, is where they'll be doing all the, the speeches and stuff. And then from there, I believe, doing the march. It's from 11 to 3 on Friday. If you cannot attend because, you know, you got to go to work or something cool, um, you can listen because we will be simulcasting. So, um, and we love doing that for you guys. And then on Saturday, Jay will be doing the same thing. Um, the Poor People's Campaign will be in Leesburg, um, and he will be simulcasting that event for you. So tune in to your local, locally produced, um, locally operated nonprofit radio, um, and let us know how we can better serve the community, but um, we really do enjoy bringing you local stories. And I think I'm almost done with my announcements. Now that I've shuffled a ton of paper like this, I do have a couple of underwriters I'd like to acknowledge. And so I would like to thank Affordable Home Inspection, inspection of properties for sale um, to ensure that the property is safe. Affordable Home Inspection donates to local worthy causes like WRWK. You can reach them at 804-221-2602 and email Rowan, that's R-O-W-A-N, 1930 at comcast.net. Uh, the website is affordablehomeinspec.com. There's no T at the end of that in spec. Um, WRWK is also underwritten by local sponsors like the Thrifty Quaker. The Thrifty Quaker is this um, thrift store that's operated by the Friends Meeting House of Midlothian. And their business model is to operate the thrift store, cover their costs, and at the end of the month, whatever they have that's extra, they donate to another local nonprofit. So they have chosen us before, um, and we are just delighted to have uh, been the recipient of their generous gift. 
Um, if you would like to check out the Thrifty Quaker, they are open most days from 9.30 to 7 p.m. in the Midlothian Station Shopping Center. Uh, we are also underwritten by local sponsors like the Follow the James Sierra Club. Um, and I happen to know that this weekend is the big, big, big yard sale over at U of R. Um, and that is all for benefit of the Follow the James Sierra Club. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be saving a lot of merchandise that kids from U of R are done using um, from hitting the landfill. And um, the money that you spend on those items uh, will go to support your local Sierra Club. So it's a good deal all around. Um, and by the end of the show, we'll have hours and locations for you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for your help, Ian. I can take a hint. Ian's going to be my research assistant tonight, too. So uh, without further ado, let's get into talking about our actual topic. So tonight we are here to talk about uh, the differences between, not just the differences between um, the, the THC and CBD, because there are a lot of other components that you're going to find within each of those plants um, when we talk about the chemical components. I was really impressed with that big chart you guys had on the wall, and I was like, that's fascinating. Um, for those of you who know uh, me a little bit better, you know that my, or my first career was actually in pharmacy, um, so I'm a little fascinated with chemistry and its application to human biology. So um, there you go. Uh, so I was really excited to see that, and that was one of the things that really spurred my curiosity was seeing, you know, I've heard about a handful of things, um, you know, besides just folks that want to get high, uh, but I've heard about a handful of uses for um, the, the various chemical components inside it, but I had no idea that there was that much. Right. So it was really exciting. Yeah, and, and a lot of people don't realize that within the cannabis plant, there's over 100 cannabinoids. The two primary ones, obviously, as you know, THC and CBD. And even we've been open since December 15th, and we've had a good solid flow of customers. And I still am a little surprised at how many people don't realize that hemp and cannabis are two different plants completely. Right. And yeah. Well, now here's what's, here's what's interesting is that I, when I was doing research for the show and I was like, oh, well, let me start off by, you know, sharing, you know, like the, the chemical information or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, one of them is called cannabis and the other one is called cannabis sativa. But then again, there's a, there's a strain of marijuana that's also referred to as sativa. Mm-hmm. Which isn't the same as hemp, but that could, that gets really confusing for certainly someone who doesn't work in the industry or someone who has never used a product right. made from those things. And that's where it gets terribly confusing. Um, mm -hmm. And we are going to, there was a, a question that Ian asked me earlier. We'll get to that much later in the show, but, you know, we're going to talk about all of that stuff because um, yeah. we also have to talk about the, the, uh, the legal implications because, you know, the country itself is in flux. Oh, yeah, and you're seeing a lot of news reports now right. of people getting arrested at, right. at airports, having their CBD oil, and right. there's a lot of, that's, and, and as you touched right when you introduced me into the show, that they that our store doesn't just provide CBD products and hemp products, but we also want to educate as well, mm -hmm. because it's extremely important to not just normalize this as a as a holistic approach to health, but it, we need to educate too, because there's mm -hmm. a lot of misinformation out there. Yes. And since the farm bill was just passed last December, uh -huh. even if somebody were to go online and try to research CBD on their own, they're seeing a lot of old information right. because things haven't been updated. They'll see things just from last year that are still saying that CBD is a Schedule One drug. Right. And that's incorrect. It's a Schedule Five now. So there is a lot of misinformation out there just because this is hitting the market at such a rate that uh, I don't think people were really expecting this much popularity behind this approach. And I have to say that um, I was really sort of surprised. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a bit of a political junkie. I think that would be fair to say. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I've been kind of watching, paying attention to legislation moving, you know, across the country in, in various places and the, you know, the, various, like really widely various, very different ways that people are going about handling stuff like this um, or maneuvering, through, you know, like working their way through, through, through however each community wants to handle it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I've been really interested to see that, but uh, I was definitely one of those people who thought like, nope, Virginia is not going to be anywhere near 
sure the first half. Yeah. <laughs> nope. They're probably going to be close to the end of the second half. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I so. hate to say this. I really think that from a, a legalization standpoint, it's going to be legalized nationally before Virginia becomes one of the states to yeah. embrace cannabis. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, so I think a couple of different things that we should do, first of all, is I would like to um, start off by... Maybe maybe let's talk about dispelling some common myths. Okay. Um, and then kind of work our way into some of the new research and the things that that really indicates about different um, different conditions that we can talk about treating because that's the stuff that gets me very excited is looking for um, how do we how do we use this in a in a positive way. Well, and you we started touching on it at the beginning too that this CBD cannot be used recreationally. So I guess the first myth that we can uh, tackle right now is that CBD cannot provide any psychoactive effects whatsoever. Um, it doesn't produce the same high associated with THC. Um, so CBD cannot be used recreationally to much to the chagrin of a lot of customers that walk into our store looking at the hemp leaf in our logo thinking that we're essentially a, a dispensary. Mm -hmm. We uh, just provide CBD products that are going to be derived from hemp. Mm -hmm. And that's another myth that we could tackle right away is you can have uh, CBD derived from marijuana. Mm -hmm. and But with us being in the state that we live in, right. everything has to be hemp derived. Yeah. So like I said earlier, those stories of people being like a woman being arrested in Texas for mm -hmm. having trying to fly with their CBD oil, mm -hmm. that was derived from marijuana. And okay. with her being in Texas... It's not legal in that state. Yeah. So that was the problem with that. I did get, I, I can't tell you how many phone calls I got I'm from sure. our customer base. I'm sure. Terrified about to fly. Yes. Thinking that they're going to be charged with a federal offense. Right. And I had to tell every single one of them that even if you go on the TSA guidelines, if it's as long as it's hemp derived, you are fine. Thankfully, because of the Farm Act. Right. Um, and yet, that doesn't. I'm sure that that just still doesn't sound super attractive about flying with the product. Right. Um. Did you have a question? Just the details with the farm bill. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, can we get maybe a little further detail about the farm bill? Sure. Go into... In the, in the broad spec, uh, just to take it from a very broad spectrum, it's it legalized hemp. It took it off as a Schedule One, uh, which, again, and even though it was widely known that it didn't produce any psychoactive effects whatsoever, it was still linked into a Schedule One classification from the DEA along with marijuana. Um, Thankfully, it's now down to a Schedule 5, and now throughout the entire country, it is legal to grow hemp and cultivate it. Now, I will say that there are still some stipulations, um, like, for instance, until the language of the law is, is changed, you can still, you're still unable to grow, produce, and distribute CBD oil all within your same state. So okay. as much as our storefront, as, as you both have known coming into our store, we really want to focus on local products. Mm -hmm. We would love to have uh, hemp products that are produced locally. We can't as of right now. And we're still working okay. on, on lobbying to try to get that changed. Okay. And thankfully, it looks like it will because Virginia, uh, even with its faults, it does like things to stay local. Mm -hmm. So that is something that still needs to be tweaked with that farm bill. Okay. Okay. Well, that's really interesting. So I think one of the things that I would hmm, – yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe Ian will be kind enough to do a little research in the background uh, to find out some of the things about because um, the other stuff that I'm really curious about you know besides the medicinal potential or the the possibilities of uh, you know um, or I, I don't know because there are other uses that aren't really medicinal but anyway mm. you know like I'm also fascinated with the thought of you know replacing paper that relatively the the tree paper industry with hemp and um, you know, a variety of other products, as well as the, the part where it grows so rapidly. And oh, absolutely. It can make such such radical changes for, you know, our environmental condition. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I'm not sure that, but that's outside of your arena. So um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm excited because I see a lot of potential in it. Um, and to the best of my understanding, I don't see a great deal of danger in hemp. No. To the, be clear, I'm not trying to equate the two, but I don't see a lot of danger with the one. Right, and and there is no there is no danger approaching hemp, and as you said, not just paper, but uh, Levi is looking into mm -hmm. cultivating with hemp mm -hmm. as opposed to cotton. Right. So in almost every facet of our industrialized life, you can use hemp as a much uh, cleaner, 
more effective alternative to what we're using right now. And especially looking at things like carbon footprints and our impact on the environment, hemp itself can be a solution to a, a huge list of problems that have been plaguing this country year after year, decade after decade. Mm -hmm. And and it also, from an agricultural standpoint, it's it's allowing farmers to turn a profit on growing crops. They don't have to get bought out by these large corporations to essentially just work for them. They can be their own farm once again by using a, a product like hemp, mm -hmm. thankfully. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, okay, so let me tell you guys about some of the cool stuff that I saw because there was just I was really sort of floored by, I didn't know what to, ex okay, let me, let me clarify. I didn't know what to expect. I've seen a head shop before or like a gas station come head shop, sort of a mm -hmm. combo thing that was weird. But anyway, um, but um, I didn't really know what to expect. And, you know, I, uh, there, there, it's not like there are services taking place in there, but there's almost like this like really chill kind of a, semi-spa vibe right. when you come in. Um, so I was really sort of fascinated to see, like, there was soap. There was tea. I mean, there was just, like, there was so much stuff in there. It was like, what's happening Oh, even have CBD water. CBD that I'm water. drinking right now. Okay, tell me. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Okay, so tell me about CBD water. See and, and, yeah, tell me about CBD water. What well, is that and why are you drinking it? What is it? It has in the, the bottle itself. It only has five milligrams of CBD, uh -huh. so it's not. Someone couldn't use that as their daily dose. It really is used as just supplemental. Okay. Um, similar to like the gummies that I brought in. Um, they, we do have the CBD oil, but there are so many products out there that have incorporated CBD. Where if somebody has either a feel like they're about to have a panic attack. Mm -hmm. Or if they suffer from a condition where they might have a pain flare up in the middle of the day, instead of reaching for their oil, which they would use almost like a daily vitamin to make sure they have enough CBD in their system uh -huh. and in their bloodstream, then they are all of these other products as well too. And looking at the um, medicinal benefits of utilizing CBD as an anti-inflammatory, things like the soap, like you mentioned, uh -huh. if somebody suffers from eczema, psoriasis, since uh -huh. those are linked to an inflammation issue, it can be used to help treat those as well. So the possibilities are, are really endless. And I know that that's this approach as it's a cure-all can, can raise some eyebrows. <laughs> I know. I just want to make sure everybody sees that. What? So, so, yeah, we're going to have to talk more about that, like yeah. topical application and, and uh, efficacy. Yes. But two questions on Facebook. One cool. thing, are we talking about the benefits of CDB oil? And so I think we've talked about it already that there's, it's more than just oil. It's right. a whole family of products, mm -hmm. including yeah. water. Someone's also asked, can you buy it online? So. Yes, you can buy it online. Um, there are only a, on our website, cultivatewellness.com, you can order things online. Uh, and we can ship within the state. We can ship to other states. The only two we can't is Nebraska and South Dakota. That's currently right now, those are the only two that we're not allowed to exchange interstate commerce. Okay. Um, I'm just curious why. Do you know why? I'm honestly, I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know Thanks. whether they want to keep everything within the same state. <laughs> okay. Or if we really want to take an abstract view of those states in no, general. No, <laughs> I was just, just curious. Like, yeah. is there some sort of, like, so that's just something that works out between the two state governments to decide what they're Correct. willing to, okay, what mm -hmm. they're willing to um, trade in. Okay, cool. That's just, yeah, I was just curious. Um, okay. Wow. So... Tell me, um, where are we growing hemp in Virginia? Where, where is that happening? I mean, it's happening. You can go into areas in Goochland, Powhatan. Um, there, are some, uh, there are some areas out in Hanover as well. There are even few local right around here where it's just a small growing operation, but it's still there starting the operation itself uh -huh. to then get ready to keep expanding. Okay. And I think a lot of farmers within Virginia want to get on a jump of it now before the the market becomes oversaturated right on yeah. that makes sense well i i guess that's what i thought of when i saw so many i mean you know because you've always seen like a little bit of uh, paraphernalia or whatever at little bodegas and stuff but right. like a handful of like full-blown head shops and just bam 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 came up all of a sudden i was like i think that means that people are trying to position themselves for when this becomes legal 
Yes. You know, they're already going to have an established business where they can simply add that to to what they're doing. Oh, of course. And I'm I mean, you, like you said, you're seeing CBD products and I mean Elwood Thompson has it uh -huh. in there. And a lot uh -huh. of other grocery stores are trying to carry it too. Mm -hmm. CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, they've all announced that they're going to carry, start carrying topicals in I medicinal sample. states. I got a sample from a massage therapist. Yeah. Of a little something, something to, yeah. And it is, it, so. it is almost like a gold rush. And yeah. everyone's trying to get in on the CBD right. game as quickly as possible. And right. one message that we tell everybody with our store is if you not to take away from our products, but if anybody's looking to get into CBD, they have to know where the source is because unfortunately it is unregulated right now. And I have seen a good amount of customers come in to our store and have products. They'll, they'll, they'll hand me a bottle and say, why didn't this work? And there are a good amount of times where all they've been sold is straight hemp seed oil and there's no CBD extract. And it's unfortunate that they are being marketed something that is a CBD product but it has little to no CBD in it at all. Okay. And so there is, it's, it's a little bit up to the consumer. I'm a big fan of regulation personally. So, well, well I think it is important. <laughs> and I, it's because right now with it being almost like a wild west and a gold rush, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of people who are taking advantage of that misinformation. I'm sure. I mean, the, the worst story that, um, that I can share with our customer base was, uh, this woman came in, um, and had a vaping cartridge, like CBD vape cartridge. Uh huh. And that wasn't from us. She bought it online and she kept saying that it made her throat feel almost like she had pneumonia. It had that same burn to it and wanted me to see what, um, what was wrong. And I looked at the inactive ingredients and it was the chemical name, uh, ethyl glycol, but that's antifreeze. Oh, Jiminy crickets. And they used it essentially as a sweetening agent. So there, there is a lot of products, unfortunately in the market that, you know, not to scare people off from using CBD, but you should you err be on the side. Careful about of your source. Right. You need yeah. to look at the source, and that's why we third-party test everything. Even though we've known this, the hemp farms that we've worked with, and the companies and distributors that we've worked with for you know a number of years, and developed those relationships, we still want to have quality control because mm -hmm. we know how transparency is extremely important in the world of CBD. And you have when you have a customer base that or even just nationwide, the thrill of getting into CBD, it's back because people want to have a natural alternative. And it's unfortunate that there's a lot of companies out there that take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it is. Shame, shame. Yes. Here you go. <laughs> I, Say it. I have a, yeah, I actually, when it first, the farm bill first passed, I actually went to a place and, and it was, um, Oh my goodness. So yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Distracted. Yeah. And, uh, got something that was, uh, I thought was CDB and, um, it, it wasn't, it mm -hmm. was something else. And it was, uh, apparently like the same thing as derived from the same thing as bath salts and it did not have the desired effect. And I put it in the trash can, but it was pretty horrible stuff. Yeah. And then, I, and then that's why, like, I like the idea of local businesses that, that have the, the, the lab reports on what they're doing and they're, you know, reputable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, because these, these, some of these little gas station places, like I'm, I, I have to admit it that I, that's where I got it, you know, from a place on the other side of not, not very, not near here. Uh, and I was ignorant, you know, there's a lot of ignorance. I'm one of them. So I, I had every reason to know better, but I was a victim to, uh, some, something that wasn't legit. So I'm, I just want to put that out there. Yeah, yeah it, it happens. happens. It absolutely happens. And um, I mean, even the, going back to the education issue, even some of these stores that carry CBD, even if it's from a reputable source, if somebody doesn't know what, if the person who's, who's attending the store at that moment doesn't know anything about CBD, that can also become problematic too. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, frankly, anybody that works at a grocery store selling CBD isn't their top priority. And even if they're an advocate for it, if somebody asks them a very specific question, right. what, what medications does this right. interview in, interfere with? They might not know. Right. And I, training do they have? and I was, I was out shopping around Valentine's day at this. Um, there's a shop in downtown Richmond that carries CBD and, um, but it wasn't their primary reason for their shop. And I saw a customer inquire about the CBD that they carried. And of course I had the like, 
quietly listen in to make sure that everybody was saying the right information. And unfortunately, the person running the register gave all this incorrect information, kind of downplayed everything about CBD. And I saw in that moment somebody who might have really benefited from utilizing CBD, their interest was just gone because they hit one roadblock and that was it. So information is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it is 7.30. I'm going to give you guys a little station ID. This is WRWKLP 93.9 FM in Midlothian. We're serving Chesterfield, Henrico, Richmond, Goochland, and Hanover. Uh, my name is Stephanie. This is In the Frequency of Hope, and I would like to introduce you all, if you've just checked in, uh, to James Brooks. He's my guest tonight. He's here from Cultivate Wellness. Yes. That's and uh, we are discussing um, cannabidiol, which is the active ingredient found in hemp, which is now legal in the state of Virginia, and a variety of different products um, that, that are being made from hemp and a gajillion different applications. Like there was just stuff in there that I was really stunned by. I was like, I had no idea. It was just really cool. Um, and so I guess that's one of the things that I would like to – Maybe the next thing that I really like to, um, to, to help folks understand is the endo Cannabino endocannabinoid system. Yeah, once, once we get into like the fifth <laughs> syllable, all of a sudden my mouth does not want to do that. Um, endocannabinoid system. <laughs> you got cannabidiol pretty something good. Like that That's, that even like, took me a while to get used on, to. I've been working on it for a couple of days now so that I could do this. Um, so... Um, Anyway, I found it really sort of fascinating, um, the research that indicates, uh, you know, the, the, you know, whatever it was, 40 years ago, we discovered endorphins in humans, the endorphin system, or right. 60, whatever it was. Um, and, and then we've d now discovered there's this endocannabinoid Endocanna system. Yes, that one. <laughs> 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 yes, that one. Um, and so if you'll tell folks a little bit more about that, because I was really shocked by that information. And, and then, you know, the um, uh, the thing that Shannon was talking about the other day, yeah. you know, with a, ver a variety of illnesses that have come up, you know, over whatever period of time. Anyway, I'll let you go. <laughs> right. Well, so the endo endocannabinoid system was uh, really discovered within the 90s, and it's a regulatory system. Um, similar to like our like our hormonal system, and what the endocannabinoid system does with the cannabinoid receptors, it creates a a balance within our body, a homeostasis. That's what it promotes. And when you have your uh, cannabinoid receptors depleted, they're starting to show signs that that is linked to issues like anxiety or pain and inflammation and autoimmune disorders. That they're that. And a depleted endocannabinoid system could be a remedy to a, a long list of different ailments that thankfully they're finally able to research further into that. And the biggest uh, things that people need to look at with the, with the impact of CBD on an endocannabinoid system is that there are two receptors you'll see, especially if you go into our shop and look at the giant model <laughs> that we have, uh, that you either have C1 or C2 receptors. Now, the C1 receptors are primarily within our, within our brain and within our lungs, uh, and that's what really uh, binds with the THC, so to, to provide those psychoactive effects. Now, our C, C2 receptors act more of, as like a messaging system between our cells, so that's what CBD binds to as well as, C, as the C1 receptors. So that's why they're starting to see a positive impact utilizing CBD with things that affect the immune system or within our bone structure, uh, things that were previously very difficult to treat, like um, like conditions such as uh, there are some pediatric CD, uh, seizure disorders mm -hmm. that were very hard to treat. That once they started incorporating CBD, that was what could really benefit them as well. Mm -hmm. And that was all because of further researching the impact of our endocannabinoid system and what happens when it is depleted. That's See, guys, I told you this stuff was going to get super interesting tonight because <laughs> now we're going to break it down and we're going to start talking about, well, we'll see where it goes. It depends on, you know, who calls in and what sort of information we get. 
um, that floods in. Um, yeah, and I need to give you guys a phone number just in case you want to call in and you want to ask me or James or Ian any questions. Um, <laughs> 8044641089. is WRWK 93.9 FM. My name is Stephanie. This is In the Frequency of Hope. And if you have any questions about either THC or CBD and their use um, here in the state of Virginia, please give us a call. That'll be fun. We'll be here until 9 o'clock tonight. Uh, you can also watch us on Facebook on the live stream. So go to our, um, our Facebook page, and you'll see that we're running a uh, live stream right now. So you could also watch people talk on the radio. <laughs> James, our body produces CBD, uh, cannabinoids, don't they? Well, yeah, those are the receptors. The receptors. Yeah, we do Thank have, we have the, the receptors. That's why you can utilize uh, the medicinal benefits of cannabis and CBD. Uh, with marijuana, THC and CBD, because we already have those receptors mm -hmm. within us. And a lot of times people think that that's because we, we had hemp within our diet several, you know, hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. it, it was natural to have hemp products. We were exposed to it. We had animals that ate hemp when it grew more freely uh -huh. than it is now. So what people are starting to suggest that um, due to evolution over time, we develop these receptors to be able to absorb this and, and uh, receive the medicinal benefits of consuming things like THC and CBD. But once the everything became illegal, once things started to be more restricted, that could be a cause as to why we're seeing so many problems that of diseases linked to inflammation, anxiety, um, and stress. Those are, as everybody knows, from a medical standpoint, stress and inflammation are the root cause to a long list of different ailments and conditions. Yeah. Truly, truly, truly. That's really, that's really, really interesting. Um, I don't think I had really appreciated that. I know that we had talked, touched on a couple of things, you know, when I talked to you last, but I don't think I really appreciated quite the, um, the impact of the endo- Cannabinoid? Yeah, that. <laughs> Y'all can tell which word I practiced and which one I didn't, huh? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and uh, so let's talk again. You said that, um, I mean, obviously, there's, a, there's like a, a growing list of conditions that people are trying to treat with it or that we have found have some level of efficacy um, for, you know, various conditions. What are, say, some of, like, give me the top, whatever, five, ten, uh, something in that order of conditions that people are successfully treating? And then, then we're going to get into, like, very detailed questions, because I really want to know about that soap. I'm not kidding. Yeah. So, <laughs> you should have brought soap, James. <laughs> I should have. I should have brought more than just the gummies. Uh, <laughs> So really the big, the I guess you say the top five diseases that um, people are really focusing on right now, other than just general anxiety and stress, mm -hmm. um, and that can include things not just outside of general anxiety. They can, uh, there was a study done, I believe it's on the National Institute of Health uh, gov site, I believe it was back in 2014, there's a research study that was looking at a, showing a positive correlation with general anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, um, social anxiety, so all different forms of anxiety and stress related could benefit from CBD from what they've shown already with that first study. Um, the second, like I mentioned, inflammation, and that can be uh, conditions like fibromyalgia, um, psoriasis, eczema. Um, you, know, you could have even just going to things like dry skin. It can help with that as well. Arthritis? See that arthritis, one, absolutely. Me. Arthritis is, a, is with our uh, customer base, arthritis is going to be one of the top as well. And also insomnia because CBD will help uh, and it shows a positive correlation to helping somebody not just go to sleep but have a more restful sleep, being able to get into that REM cycle, which was a, an effect that I wasn't even uh, expecting when I started taking CBD on a regular basis. Uh, I used to think that I was a light sleeper until I started regularly using CBD. And then I, now whenever I fall asleep, when next time I wake up, it's morning, which was unusual for me. So, so sleep, sleep, sleep disorders are, 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 are potentially impacted by this. Absolutely. And I noticed when I was in Cultivate, uh, which is a lovely store that Stephanie said, it was just lovely. It's, it's, and it's so nice that you're our neighbors. You're not on the other side of town. Right. You're right here in Chesterfield, right up the street. That's so cool. Uh, I noticed that you had uh, topicals, like creams, hand creams. So is it for, for arthritis? Absolutely. We have uh, a couple different topical remedies, and one of those uh, is formulated for arthritic pain. It's, um, 
It's called our freeze cream. It has a, it's non-mentholated. We wanted to provide something that, uh, since that mentholation could upset those joints a bit, that we use arnica oil and eucalyptus, which as we all know about arnica oil and its benefits too against inflammation. Mm -hmm. But arthritic pain, uh, definitely from a topical standpoint, even with myself, I used to work in construction and there was just one day I lifted something wrong and a herniated disc just, you know, and so I was laid up. I let the, I let it settle down naturally, but everybody knows those discs don't go yeah. right back. So typically if I'm on my feet for too long or if I sleep a certain way, I'm about as stiff as the Tin Man. Mm -hmm. Like I can't move, can't bend. And even using our cream, that was helping me. So it, it felt like I didn't have any back pain whatsoever. And it was, that's pretty impressive. Even as an advocate of CBD, I tell everybody that I was blown away of how fast it worked. It worked within like 10 minutes and it was as if I didn't have any back issues whatsoever. Hmm. Wow. I should have yeah. brought that too. Yeah. Really, really. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, like I would be willing to give something like that a whirl. Um, you know, where some of the other products might make me a little leery. Mm hmm. But I'm like, okay, like, I don't know why I can somehow I can rationalize like uh, a topical. Well, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to get a buzz from a topical. There's that. There is so that. <laughs> well, and you're right. Most, most people who are a little bit hesitant, it's either topical or the gummies because it's, okay. it has a little bit more of, I personally, I think there's a, a fun factor behind the gummies the itself. Gummies. Oh yeah. So let's see yeah. in here. Um, but a topical, you know, when we start going into the specifics with an oil and utilizing a CBD oil or tincture, it's going right into the bloodstream. And that could make okay. people some a little bit hesitant because right. it's going right into their right, bloodstream. Right. Right. A topical, you're not going to be getting it into your bloodstream. You're working on the area um, that's affected. And yeah. it is a little bit more of a, an easier introduction into the world of CBD. Interesting. So it, the CBD is the active ingredient that's actually providing the anti-inflammatory effects or does THC also do that? Well, THC, uh, or does THC only address pain? Does that make sense? Oh, it does make sense. Yeah. Cause I know that I've, uh, I've, I've, um, heard, heard about, you know, topical THC products specific for pain relief, but you're saying CBD contained from uh, just hemp derived. Right. So that's a different chemical entirely, also a different plant. Right. So, and THC, because uh, since within hemp, you do have a naturally occurring THC level. Okay. Um, you'll have, uh, and this was classified because of the 2014 Farm Bill, as a matter of fact, that hemp is classified as having a THC content of 0.3% or less. Okay. So there is a natural occurring amount of THC. Again, okay. not high enough for anything psychoactive, but that those THC cannabinoids help with pain relief, like okay. you mentioned, helps with sleep, everyone knows increased appetite, and uh, suppression of muscle spasms. So from a topical standpoint, okay. if somebody has tight muscles or they need to help with that inflammation, a topical could be greatly beneficial as well. Interesting, interesting. Like I said, I'm, I, um, I'm a massage therapist that gave me a little sample packet of something. I think a chiropractor gave me a sample of something else too. Yeah. Um, and they each had the, the leaf symbol on it. Um, and so I know one of them I just never opened because I was kind of like, hmm, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> and the other one I smelled and I didn't put on because I didn't like white smell. Yeah. Yeah. We tried to work on that with ours and, and we, yeah. So, because <laughs> nobody wants around walking around. They might feel great. They don't want to smell bad. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but yeah, no, that sounds really interesting to me um, that you're able to achieve that. I mean, because I, I have some, some aches and pains that I've accrued over the years. <laughs> <laughs> a bath bomb. Uh, we do have oh, bath bombs. Okay. <laughs> now, now you know. Now you know. You can, it really is. It's like a little spa thing. Um, but I think that's really interesting to know that there's a whole different um, method available, particularly in pain relief, because, you know, we're finding out as, uh, you know, as each passing day goes by, that the things that we once thought were really pretty safe, you know, we're finding out have some really long-term um, concerning effects, you know, we used to take ibuprofen without, without a second thought. Yeah. Um, you know, and, um, what else is out there? Aleve and Tylenol and aspirin, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I think it used to be pretty casual, you know, about, Oh, you got a little bump, got a little headache, got a little, oops, you got a little, yeah. little something that doesn't feel good. Pop one. Yeah, it's okay. Um, 
and we're discovering that that's really not okay long term for people's health. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm really excited to find out about other things. Like I use a variety of topical agents. You know, your your various icy hots with varying levels of icy and or hot and or smell or no smell <laughs> um, <laughs> um, already. Um, so I'm super excited to hear about that. I would I would be willing to try something like that and see like okay and compare it. You know with the effectiveness of the other stuff. That's really cool. Oh, well, I now use gummies instead of ibuprofen. I've made a complete switch over. So, really? Yeah. For like oh, a yeah. headache? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, for how many of those gummies oh, yeah. would you eat for a headache? Uh, I would start I would start with either between 15 to 25 milligrams and that would help. Well, how many gummies is that in that package? There's uh there's th those are 13 milligrams each. So like two of these? Yeah. And that's those a gummy isn't going to have as long-term effects as you would like with an oil since it's going right into your bloodstream so it's perfect for something like supplemental pain and i do have to say one uh yeah crack it open right now you might as well uh i will say if if somebody ever suffers from a hangover cbd will be your best friend <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you know the the old uh, the old chestnut of you know drinking a glass of water and taking an aspirin before going to bed right don't even need to do that anymore just you know still drink the water that's great for you but try to use cbd one time if somebody has uh, a fun night out that? yeah um okay so let's see what are they good here? yeah i brought the so, uh, the gummy bears i don't i certainly don't yeah, if this turns out to not be, <laughs> but I'd be doing it right there. Um, on, on no, don't do it. I'm just kidding. It's legal. So it says it, it is, is THC-free, CBD from hemp, organic gummy bears, mm -hmm. 500 milligrams per bag, so 13 milligrams in each gummy bear. These are CBD-infused edibles. Yes. Um, somebody else is going to have to talk for a second while I okay. so those chew made? on gummies. So we get those we get those private labeled out of a company out of Michigan. Okay. And they, um, yeah, we just have an, uh, an agreement with them. It's we still source everything from quality products, um, but we those are what are considered an isolate product and. What that entails, similar to, to what you mentioned, the, our wheel of cannabinoids uh -huh. that we have in our store, whenever you come across a product that's considered an isolate, that is strictly the CBD itself. There's no, none of the other cannabinoids. There's no CBDA, CBGA, or any of the THC cannabinoids either. It's strictly the CBD. Um, so that's another reason why people typically go with the gummies without any hesitation because they're – there is no THC, so if anybody, either what I, you know, personally or professional reasons, don't want to ingest any form of THC whatsoever, isolates are an option for people. Uh huh. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So there, in other words, reading so, between the lines, you're guaranteed to pass a urine test if you drink, if you eat this person, something else possibly. Correct. Yeah. There's no levels of THC. Now there are. I will say there are some. There used to be a lot of drug screening that uh, would test for straight cannabinoids, not just THC. Medical panels used to test for cannabinoids in general. So even if somebody was taking CBD, it would register. So I tell everybody that comes in the store that's hesitant about drug testing, I tell them, check with your employer right. of what they test for. If they test for straight cannabinoids, CBD would show up. So, right. But it is also a completely legal product. So if somebody does have a good relationship with their employer, they could tell them that they are utilizing this product. Cool. Cool. Well, that's really, yeah. I'm, I'm, I just can't tell you how interested I am in all the possibilities of this, really. Um, I'm hoping that we will start getting some calls with some questions for James um, since, uh, since he brought all of his expertise with him tonight. Uh, do we have any folks tapping in with questions over there on the uh, live stream, Ian? Let's see. Um, well, we have a comment from uh, someone. Oh, some people are giving some hot thumbs up just now. Uh, just comments that they think that it's good for the uh, Commonwealth, that it, the hemp products, can, uh, there's, there's jobs involved. Um, so there's R&D jobs, there's packaging. Um, you know, it's good for the economy, apparently. So I guess someone's commenting that, that they hope that it, it becomes more. Right on. And you're hiring people. I mean, right you're, you're hired industries. by the industry, right? I Absolutely, mean, yeah. You manage the store now? I do. And you can... And I think that's I think that's another valid point that we were talking about, you know, kind of seeing this activity happening is this is a new industry that's kind of moving into our area. Yes. Um, you know, other states um, that have gone through the legalization process um, also just saw all of a sudden, you know, overnight or, you know, within a week's time or whatever, you're you're 
boom, you're just developing a whole new economy, you know, within your region. Oh, absolutely. Um, which is also super exciting, you know, because that gives a lot of people a lot of different opportunities. Um, and because it is now legal to actually grow hemp here in the state of Virginia, although you can't purchase things from them directly. So because of the laws here in Virginia, are they then required to sell products out of state? And, yes, and they, they could set things up to do out of state. And hopefully, hopefully everything gets changed very soon. Okay. Um, because there is a huge push for it. Yeah. Because this could be a great um, revenue opportunity for our state yeah. to keep everything within its borders. Also, too, it would be great to be able to have that interstate commerce just from an economic standpoint. Right. But to, keep, to be able to utilize the community uh, is just going to help the state even more. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, replacing some of the um, the agricultural money, you know, tobacco, cotton, things that we're just growing less and less of. Right. Um, repairing some of our soil from overgrowth of the same things over and over again, um, you know, and using boatloads of chemicals to do it, <coughs> corn. <laughs> and um, <laughs> what? Oh, Did I, I say that out loud? <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Um, and um, and being able to actually you know repair the soil by growing a different yes organic organic yes um, a, a different product or a different plant um, you know with its properties that you know replenish the soil etc like that sounds like a really fascinating exciting opportunity um, for a lot of entrepreneurs here in the state of Virginia whether they want to get into growing or actually starting to produce products from whatever that is and the products don't have to be consumable or you know something that people are going to be using physically as we mentioned you know there's there's clothing there's you know fabric there's uh, lawn application i mean there's just there's a ama it's an amazing it's an amazing plan. It's an amazing thing that's <laughs> happening right now. And, you know, this is just a tiny portion of it. So I appreciate the message that we got uh, that came up on the live stream about, you know, somebody's really excited about the potential for businesses because I agree. I think that's really exciting. Well, and, and I will say just before we move on to, to something else, you know, looking at, thankfully with our state, I will say that um, we opened in December. So in, in about February, I believe, there was a bill presented the House of Delegates that was uh, trying to essentially make CBD illegal again. And it, thankfully, the delegate was essentially laughed off the floor okay. because they're starting to see the positive that this can bring for the state. Yeah. And But even though there are still some people out there mm -hmm. that are very confused as to what CBD is, right. just like that one delegate. Right. Um, but I will say that it's it was nice to come into work the next day and not worry that we'd be out of a job. Right. <laughs> Do you know who the delegate was? I don't. Not off the top of my head. So d d d I have a question, Stephanie. So, yeah. so because you just talked about that, now I'm wondering, like, do the Chesterfield's finest come in and, and check you out and see, see what's going on over there? Are they curious or do they mess with you at all? Or? We haven't really been messed with, I will say. I mean, I've, I've wondered if I, – I've been curious if we've had any plainclothes officers come in just to purchase something to test later. I mean, I would completely understand because they'd want to make sure that we weren't guised as a hemp-derived right. right. establishment. So right. I, I don't – I don't see any issue with that. If they want to just double check that we are on the up and up, that's totally fine with me. And I really, I would welcome to have Chesterfield's Finest come in and take a look cause, because I know their equipment can get heavy and maybe a topical could help. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one thing that surprised me when I went there that I was not expecting, other than the fact that the store looked amazing, like an upscale, like like Beverly Hills kind of spa, you know, and you had a community room in the back. We love mm -hmm. to talk, have a show just to talk about uh, the community room. That's yeah. another topic. I didn't even make it back to the community room. Yeah, oh, we, yeah. we have an event space where we do uh, things like CBD yoga. We do classes, workshops. Um, what? I would like to start going back to the education standpoint. I'd like to start having uh, lectures. I would love to have oh, people yeah. within the medical community come in to talk about the positive correlation with using CBD. Um, because again, it's not just, it's, it's normalizing and educating. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Excellent. Same here. Excellent work. <laughs> <laughs> so so my, 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 the thing is that my point was, um, I actually do would like to invite you back and just talk about things about the community room, but, um, that's a whole other. So I was surprised that you had jars like on the counter, you had these jars of uh, leaf, bud, flower, whatever you call it. Of yeah. hemp, and it looked and smelled a lot like the stuff I saw in high school. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And so, what are people, what would someone purchase that 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 product for? What is is it say for all of the above? I mean, is there is a typical 
thing that someone gets that for? Did, did, did they like the smell or? Really, the best the best way I tell people coming into the store that I can see the look on their face that's a little overwhelming with all the different products yeah. that we have. The best way to look at our store is that it's different different delivery methods of CBD okay. essentially. Um, and the flower is a smokable product. Like you said, it, it looks and smells like it's a legal cousin. Um, it just doesn't provide the psychoactive effects. Uh, it's true. And, and so if somebody wants to have a, a fast-acting uh, pain relief method, they could use something like that. I have a lot of customers that suffer from things like sciatica that really love a, a strain that we carry called Berry Exotic because we do have different strains based off of the terpene profile, which what we talked about earlier, the indica versus sativa mm -hmm. effects, whether you want something deeply relaxing, that's the terpene profile. That's the, the beta mercine terpene. That's really prevalent in some of the flower strains that we have. Um, but we also have one that's a straight sativa that uh, it's called the Sunset Road that we have. And I tried it personally and I was cleaning my kitchen, cooking. I was just zip, 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 just going throughout the house, have tons of energy, just not that mental fogginess that you would associate with mm -hmm. a traditional sativa. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. It is interesting. Um, and then, so he was asking specifically about why you would choose that particular delivery method. I want to use that as a segue into that chart, that fascinating chart that talks about all the different components that are found within both hemp and marijuana plants and like breaks it down to you know, which, which thing treats which thing. Like, I can't tell you how, how exciting that was. Um, this what you got? Nothing. Okay. Um, yes. Yes, 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 yes that's it. Yeah, I brought so, it. So, like, there's a ton of stuff that, like, um, all of these chemical components inside the, the plants that I don't think I was even really aware there was quite that much going on in there. Um, and then when I read through the various... Um, conditions that are being treated, I think I was just standing there with my jaw on the floor for a little while. Yeah, and that's, I typically use the wheel of cannabinoids to show the difference between an isolate and full spectrum, uh -huh. but it also gives a good overview of what each cannabinoid does. Right. And because I was noticing that people were hesitant seeing that THC content, mm -hmm. but I wanted to show that there is a reason that they have, that there is a THC content. Mm -hmm. And with more and more studies, Whoops, somebody didn't, somebody got the ringer. <laughs> so that they're doing more and more studies about CBD that they uh, have a benefit with using in conjunction with THC, mm -hmm. that they, that they, they complement each other very well. So having a slight THC content can make the CBD a little bit more potent. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, we have a call coming in. Yes, we do. We have a call coming in. Uh, so we're going to take a question. Come speak the phone for me, please. All right. Shannon, are you there with us? Hold on. It's not. No, hold on. It's, it's right the button. It, I did. I did. Is it doing it? No. Say it again, Shannon. Huh. Do I, hold on. Shannon, we're having a little technical difficulty. Give me a second. No, normally, this just works, and tonight it's not working. Oh, that's right. Isn't it? That's unfortunate. That's never happened before. TikTok. Shannon, how about I just call you back on our other phone? Can I do that? Okay, right. so we are going to get Shannon on the line in uh, just a second. Uh, Ian's going to have to call her back because we're having a little technical difficulty with the telephones, but we'll work that out in just a second. I'm going to um, take a quick break and just do a station ID because we're almost at the top of the hour. This is WRWK 93.9 yeah, FM. Coming to you live from Midlothian, Virginia, and we are serving Chesterfield County, Hamrico, Hemri Richmond, Goochland, and Hanover. Uh, my name is Stephanie. This is In the Frequency of Hope. Tonight we're discussing THC and CBD um, now that hemp is legal here in the state of Virginia. I actually have a guest in the studio with me tonight. His name is James he Brooke. He's the manager on. of Cultivate okay, Wellness. Um, and he came in to share just a, a ton of his expertise about this. We're going to go ahead and take a call because I think we've got Shannon back on the line. We have Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Hi, How are you doing? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Um, I admit I've only been watching um, um, recently, but I was excited to see that you guys were taking calls because um, I had a, a pretty important question. I wondered if you may, if you had addressed this, I apologize. Um, I have a young son who um, is still 11 years old, and I've been having a little bit of, 
not really like pushback, but um, I guess kind of around the bush, I guess you could say that um, regarding uh, that he has a uh, Tourette syndrome um, diagnosis. And I wanted to know a little bit more about um, how do you choose something or is this even allowed yet for children or what can you guys maybe tell me about that? Sure. Now, I, I will say that we do have a good amount of our customer base that do utilize our products for children, ranging mm -hmm. from um, conditions like autism or attention deficit disorder. And I've had one customer that it, is, is utilizing a full spectrum product for Tourette's. Um, now, I haven't had a follow up with them to see exactly how it is benefiting them, but mm -hmm. just going into our research with it, um, with some of the, um, the physical tics that are associated with Tourette's, the suppression of muscle spasms will, uh, just from at least on paper, should help in some way, shape, or form. That's, that's great. It sounds very helpful. How would I be able to, I don't know, like maybe access or know which, so you're saying that it's something called a full spectrum? Yes. Product? Yep, it would be a full spectrum product. Uh, that's the one that has the slight trace amounts of THC. Certainly not high enough for anything psychoactive, and I can't stress mm -hmm. that enough. Um, but that is being utilized uh, for children. And we, um, if you would be interested in coming in to cultivate wellness, we can do even like a further consultation with you to go over different milligram strengths as well. We, we have all the information at our disposal in the shop as well. That's awesome. Um, now, <clears throat> like in the Richmond, are you guys, you guys are in the Richmond area, is that right? Yes, we are. We're right off of Midlothian Turnpike. Um, our address is 13140 Midlothian Turnpike. That's awesome. And do you have you worked maybe to give information or anything like that with either Children's Hospital or VCU where it, you know, to kind of educate physicians or anything like that? I mean, we would love to have people come in of that caliber and talk to us in further detail to see where they stand and to provide them some more information that we've come up on our end as well. Uh, I'd love to have a dialogue open with the medical community to see where everybody stands. Awesome. That's really great. Well, I hope that we can maybe bridge that gap there and see what we can maybe build because I know that my my son, um, you know, as he gets older and his teen, you know, he's becoming a teenager, and uh, with that, having this added, it's been a little difficult. So um, I'd love to maybe just get something to help him, and I certainly appreciate you guys being on air and taking my questions. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much for calling in tonight, Shannon. And I just oh. wanted to say uh, that we'll be thinking about your son. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank I mean, because I know that oh, this is a, a frightening you. topic, um, you know, particularly when you're concerned for your child's health. Yeah. Um, I want to ask a question, piggyback off of yours, if you'll stay on the line, though. Um, sure. Because what I heard you say, James, is that you would recommend the since I have the magical chart, I can see what has all of the stuff in it. Uh, you said that you would recommend the product, something that is a, you referred to as a broad spectrum product. And I want to read to everybody the list of things that can be attributed to using a full spectrum CBD mm -hmm. product. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so this is huge. And I think it'll, it'll help inform Shannon, um, as well as other folks out there listening about the potential. Um, and I do want to say, first of all, uh, most importantly, that we are not here. Um, neither of us is actually qualified to give anybody any real medical advice. Uh, so just clear that up for folks while we're on the radio. Um, but, you know, I can read. I can read stuff off of this piece of paper. <laughs> um, so what this says is that CBD is antibacterial. It inhibits cancer cell growth. It is neuroprotective. It promotes bone growth, reduces seizures and convulsions, reduces blood sugar levels, reduces function in the immune system. I have a question about what that means. Mm -hmm. Reduces inflammation, reduces risk of artery blockage, reduces small intestine contractions, Reduces vomiting and nausea, relieves pain, relieves anxiety, slows bacterial growth, suppresses muscle spasms, is a tranquilizing agent, treats psoriasis, and is a vasorelaxant. Long well, list. Yeah. My son also has uh, type 1 diabetes. <laughs> oh. Wow. So it, won't, it won't replace insulin, I understand that, but it's, 
you know, <sighs> just something that might help make his quality of life better is what I find worth it, you know. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, but my 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 testimonial here is that if for all the good that it can do, I've not found a lot of yeah. negative side effects. I mean, it's not like it's right. to, to my experience is is not that it has it doesn't have. I've not found any uh, personally negative side effects to trying it. Well, really, the only the biggest side effects that people could take if you ingest too much CBD, uh, drowsiness can occur. Uh, you will also see if, if anybody does their own research that um, upset stomach could be an issue. Really what that could attribute to is uh, if somebody has a CBD oil that has a very low milligram count and if they're, in, if they're taking in three, four milliliters, five milliliters of, of oil, that oil could upset their stomach. Uh -huh. They're just taking in too much of that uh, carrier oil in it as well. Okay. Yeah. And so you would recommend that they move to a higher strength oil? A di yeah, a okay. stronger concentration will cut back on that potential for nausea. That makes sense. Shannon, do you have any other questions tonight? No, I'm so grateful for you guys again, and I look forward to stopping in. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you so much for calling okay. in tonight. Bye. Yeah, no problem. Have a great night. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Great. All right. So... Um, I don't know, really. That's, that's uh, yeah, I know. Uh, How do we make it the, the second I, position? Well, I'm not sure right now. So I want to get back into this. Um, I'm going to let Ian figure out if he can what's wrong with the phones, and I'm going to go back to looking at this magical list of all of the chemical components that you find. Now, is this specific to hemp? This particular yes. chart is specific to mm -hmm. hemp? Okay. So I'm just going to list them out for you guys. There's something called CBDA that reduces inflammation and inhibits cancer cell growth. There's something called CBG, as in... CBGBs. CBGBs, <laughs> right. Um, that aids sleep, it inhibits cancer cell growth, it promotes bone growth, and slows bacterial growth. CBGA reduces inflammation, relieves pain, and slows bacterial growth. CBC inhibits cancer cell growth, promotes bone growth, reduces inflammation, and relieves pain. Uh, CBCA reduces inflammation and will treat fungal infections. Mm -hmm. Delta 9 THCA Clear for takeoff. Now, which one of the which one of these is the one that that we're used to hearing about? We're more used to seeing the Delta this Nine THC, but okay. you um, the the legislation that passed last year with utilizing THCA oil uh -huh. would be the Delta Nine THCA cannabinoid. So, is it this is the one, and it has to be less than well, whatever? Yeah, THC in general. Um, those or that's are, all of these within the family. Yeah, all of these combined Correct. have to be under whatever that amount is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are one, two, three, four different THC agents found within the hemp products. One of them is Delta 9 THCA and that aids sleep, inhibits cancer cell growth and suppresses muscle spasms. The Delta 9 THC reduces nausea and vomiting, uh, relieves pain, stimulates appetite and suppresses muscle spasms. Delta 8 THC relieves pain, and THCV reduces convulsions and seizures and promotes bone growth. I, <laughs> it's, I it's, guess that's a it's long It's just list. crazy. Yeah, it's like this whole smorgasbord of uh, goodies that you find in there. <laughs> um, now, comparatively, mm -hmm. how do I ask this the right way? Okay. So there are particular, mm, yeah, this is, this is the part where it gets confusing for me. So when, when you have like, there's this one and this one and this one, you've got what three different agents inside and it says that they all will inhibit cancer cell growth. Mm -hmm. Are those for specific cancers that they're effective for? Um, is it a, combined effort with the various chemicals kind of knitted working together as opposed to how they're acting individually. I'm trying to get a grasp on that and then and then I'm going to ask you about like you know matching up to products right. like figuring out 
which products have which levels of which things I'm looking for based on what I need to treat. Exactly. That. And yes. So yeah. So <laughs> so going into it, right. So there. So right now, the way that they're looking into utilizing CBD uh, in cancer research, they're utilize, They're looking into multiple forms of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, predominantly, right now, they're the biggest research they're looking into is breast cancer and I believe lung cancer, um, if my memory serves me correctly. And they. All these cannabinoids really work well in conjunction with each other. Mm -hmm. One one big question is I, that I get with people is, well, you have a CBD isolate. Do you have a CBG isolate? Now, it is possible for, for people to get that. It is a little bit harder to extract it out because it isn't uh, the percentage level within the hemp plant itself. It's not as high as the CBD cannabinoid as well, which okay. is another reason why we modeled this to okay. show how prevalent the CBD right. cannabinoid is. Um and in utilizing it with with treatment of cancer, and again, like I, I have to be very careful of how I how I word all of this. Uh -huh. There are um, one thing that your listeners could really look into uh, to further their own education is to look into Rick Simpson oil, um, which is somebody who uh, really wants to focus in on utilizing CBD um, with uh, and THC for cancer treatment itself. And we have a product in our line, at least, that's, uh, that's called Real Scientific. It's an oral applicator, and it's an ex think of it as an extreme mega dose of CBD, where you're getting into where an oral applicator could have close to 4,000 milligrams of CBD in the container itself. How much is a dose of that? Retail? A dose of that? Um, what would it be, retail? Is that what yeah, you're asking? Yeah, that Something like that in the concentration, you're getting upwards uh, over $200. And it would be about um, a about a month supply from a oh, month supply mm -hmm. from yeah and it is a regimen and you know th the biggest thing and the reason why I have to hesitate so much about making concrete claims is with since CBD was considered a schedule one up until December what a research facility would have had to go through is um, after they conclude their animal testing and if they want to continue to do human testing they wouldn't just have to get FDA approval, they needed to get DEA approval. Right. And as we all know, that comes with its own list of red tape and stipulations. Mm -hmm. And to be completely frank, it wasn't cost effective for those research facilities to mm -hmm. continue. Right. Um, so a lot of the research that's out there based off of human testing is from uh, other countries, huh? uh, predominantly like England with the, the Pedialex that's coming out. Uh -huh. um, and that, Israel. That, Israel, and Israel. Yeah. Israel, Israel. <laughs> Israel is, is a country that is really, really focused in on the research. I mean, one one study that comes to mind is there. they were looking into treating uh, autism, uh, children with autism. And the study that they did, I believe it was in last October, had nearly an 80% success rate. Wow. In utilizing CBD. And when you say success rate, what does that indicate? It's coming in down on autism. the on the um, the the mood. It helps with their um, if they have any sort of physical tics. Okay. And it helps with their cognitive function as well too. And those are the top three things that they were looking into with that eighty percent success rate. And That's thankfully, neat. it's it is nice that we live in an internet age that we can. Mm -hmm. view these official research yeah. documents and if it might be lengthy but I do encourage listeners to really take a look at all of the research that is out there mm -hmm. thankfully and there's a fair amount of research available from Canada as well yes absolutely yeah so I think I mean the, the biggest ones that I've seen when I've been like trying to prepare for this were mm -hmm. things coming from Canada and Israel were the ones that yes that's what most of it is um, <laughs> that I can find anyway. Um, There's a lot of testimonials. I mean, they're, you know, I love science. Uh, science is great. Uh, but there's just a lot of really, like, RSL. I've known people who, who have, you know, needed that, and it, it did miraculous things for them. So. Absolutely, and that's, that's how we utilize our, our customer base. We love hearing feedback from people because that is something that we can – we can use since mm -hmm. we aren't within the medical field. Mm -hmm. We can go off of what it's done for us yes. and what it's done for our customer base. Right. I mean, I've thankfully gotten off of my anxiety medication completely. I'm not going to say that that will work for everybody. I can't, I can't make that claim, but I know that that has done that for me, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Same, same. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, 15 years of pharmaceuticals I don't use anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, it's impressive, yeah. the success rate that we see just with our own customer base. Wow. Uh, 
And I'm going to repeat it uh, just because we're required to uh, for the purpose of being on air. Yeah. Um, that's anecdotal information. We are not making medical claims. We are also not offering medical advice during the program tonight. Um, uh, sorry, James Brooks is here. He is the manager of Cultivate Wellness, and he is here to answer your questions to the best of his ability. This is his field of expertise, but I just wanted to clarify that he's not a doctor and he hasn't examined you, so there. Uh, <laughs> right? Right. I wear, I wear I think, a white shirt, not a white coat. I think that pretty much should cover the whole thing about, you know, wait, not your doctor. Uh, this is WRWKLP 93 Point nine FM. We are community radio, and we are using it to build a bridge from city to county, from left to right, and neighbor to neighbor. This is how we do things here at the work: is we bring up controversial issues, and we like to talk about them. Uh, so, um, this was the one that I picked for this week. Um, I was really, really, actually, quite thrilled to see uh, to see this level of activity happening. As as anybody who lives in the Metro Richmond area knows, that there's just a ton of development going on. But um, I'm always curious to see the different levels of development coming up, and then what kind of businesses are coming up. And seeing these different businesses kind of cropping up, I get excited about you know small businesses and entrepreneurs starting new things. So. Yay. Yeah. Um, because I do think that that's really important in our communities. Um, and the fact that you guys are going to help actually develop this whole new economy for the state of Virginia, I think, is also really important. Um, but you're also bringing in some really new stuff. I mean, it's it's new because, you know, we're using cutting-edge technology to go revisit an old-timey remedy. Exactly. Um, anyway, we have another caller, so I'm going to quit blathering for a second. Hello, caller. What's your name? Chris. Hey, Chris, thanks for calling in tonight. How are you doing? Sure. Well, um, ironically, I, I fell asleep from my uh, cancer challenges early, so you guys may have already answered this uh, question because I woke up partway into the show, so I apologize for that if you already answered it. Um, <clears throat> so I had an interesting experience where I have prostate cancer uh, in aggressive form, at least in score 9 out of 10, if anybody cares. And... Uh, so a friend of mine sent me some CBD oil, and I took it. And I've been monitoring my PSA, which is an, which is an acronym for prostate-specific antigen. So you can kind of track the cancer with this blood level called PSA. And I can see how my dietary changes caused my cancer early on to almost level off to flat, which is to say almost no growth. Uh, and then it started going exponential again recently. And so I took the CBD oil. Uh, but I also took it with uh, another friend gifted me some turmeric uh, in capsule format. And also I started using um, really hot capsaicin. So my test results are mixed because I've got three things going on at the same time. But CBD was one of those things. And here's the exciting thing. But this is the only time my PSA dropped. Of all the things I've tried, it went from a 1.7 down to 1.5 in two months, and then I ran out of the CBD and the turmeric, kept taking the capsaicin, and then I got addicted to this really tasty drink at Wawa that turned out to have dairy in it, and my, CB, my PSA shot up to a 2.0 and then a 2.1 in just one month. So um, that's two lessons. One, if you've got a prostate, don't drink dairy, and number two, CBD was at least one of three things that was the only thing so far that has demonstrated to drop my PSA output from my cancer cells. And so that's a long way of saying, A, I'm very interested in what role CBD had among those three things. And part two, uh, the real question is, I've been hearing from people who live in states that have, shall we say, more liberal laws than we do, that the THC adds another level of um, effect against cancer than CBD alone. And then there are other people who said, no, the CBD alone is the most important thing. So I'm wondering if your research has shown you, because I just heard Stephanie mention, I think it was THC number eight, I think she said, that affected cancer. Um, so I was wondering what your research there had shown whether the THC was worth having in addition to the CBD or not. 
Yes, I will say that uh, from what our research has shown us that the CBD and its uh, CBD cannabinoids that are in relation to it do work very well in conjunction with a slight level of THC as well. Um, there was a um, there was a medical study done, I believe it was in 2017, where they showed a positive correlation with treating cancer with a almost a one to one ratio between CBD and THC um, because they do work so well in conjunction with each other. So that's why with our with with the product lines that are out there that are either an isolate, broad spectrum, or full spectrum, I fully believe that the full spectrum with having that slight THC content is greatly beneficial for people that are working with um, extremely devastating conditions and illnesses. Would you happen to have um, at your store or on your website in any place any links to that to the to those studies that you just now mentioned about the THC versus C B D only on cancer? Oh, absolutely. We do have that information in our store. We don't have it on our website yet, but I am now, act as, a, as manager, I would like to expand on our website a little bit more to provide that research as well. Well, that sounds like a good excuse to come by the store and um, <laughs> check out that study. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so, um, so you said slight levels of THC, and then you mentioned one-to-one -one levels. One-to-one -one sounds like that would be quite a bit more than slight. Right. Um, but I know it's not legal to be more than slight around here. And exactly, and that's that's really what we're able to provide now is until we thankfully get to a a point where we can have that one to one. Um, really, what's nice with the full spectrum CBD is that they don't cause that psychoactive property to it. So it allows people to be on a regimen with something that isn't going to alter their state and, as well. But that one-to-one -one ratio, even with it being extremely impactful for uh, going in conjunction with someone's cancer treatment, unfortunately something that high would have a, um, a psychoactive component as well. Right, yeah. When I was in a state where it was legal, I, I tried some of that medicinal level and, and, and frankly, um, you know, I've had my time in high school, and at this moment in my life, I don't really want to be stoned. I want to have my, if I'm awake, I want my brains on all as much as they can be. So, um, you know, I'm not saying, looking down my nose, because I've been there, but I would like to find some way to, to experience the positive effects without being stoned. Oh, absolutely. Um, but I also want to try to kill off the cancer without chemo and radiation, so, you know. Understandable. Everyone's looking for a better quality of life. What did you call that? That high concentration stuff you said. Uh, it was you have a like a month regiment for two hundred bucks. What do you call that? No, that's a real. What was that? The real scientific. Rick Simpson oil. I tried that. You did try that. Did, did you have any? Uh, did you have any? Um, what's your feedback with using the Rick Simpson oil? Well, first of all, it's super freaking potent. I mean, literally. A bit the a size of a grain of sand will get you stoned for like eight plus hours, and it's Yikes. edible. So you know you put it on something like a bit of bread or whatever, or just lick it off your finger if you don't mind the taste, and um, it won't hit you right away. So I would definitely use it with caution. Right. Uh, but you can't get it around here legally, of course. Uh, and then mine got stolen when I had bought it out there. I was actually asking about the CDB variant that, that that culture has available. That's legal. We were talking about the legal stuff. <laughs> yeah, we have a we have something in stock that's called Real Scientific. That if you'd want to look into, that's a a non psychoactive version of like that Rick Simpson oil. Um, but it is interesting because I haven't I haven't spoken to many people that have been able to give me any feedback about the true Rick Simpson oil. So it's interesting to hear your take on it. Yeah, they sell it legally out west. Um, and it wasn't that expensive. I got a syringe full, minus the actual needle part, but they used the body of the syringe to put it in. Um, and uh, it wasn't that expensive. It was like 60 bucks. I think it was 60, 65 dollars. I don't remember the numbers as to how many milligrams it was. Um, it seemed like a relatively standard syringe size. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting that even um, with us being able to look at the THC rich products that we that the companies that we work with with our distributors the price of marijuana has plummeted now where as in things that are hemp derived because of the, uh, the passage of the law the cost of hemp now is going up so you're seeing an influx okay. of price so it is it is great to see that 
true Rick Simpson oil has come down in price because of that. And I will say that that is a great benefit for people that luckily live in uh, in more, I guess you could say, progressive states. I mean, when well, you're when you're sick of cancer, money often is a concern too. I mean, yeah, yeah, because it's hard to work when you're sick. Well, Absolutely. money is almost always a concern when <laughs> when one is ill with cancer. Yes, um, because treating cancer and uh, successfully surviving cancer is generally quite expensive. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck to you, uh, Chris. Chris, do you, have any, do you have any other questions? Oh. Uh, that was my peak one at the moment. If I hear something more that you guys say, um, I guess I'll call back. Cool. Well, thank you very much for calling in tonight. And I'm interested to, um, we're going to examine this whole thing that you were talking about a little bit further uh, between the CBD, capsaicin, and turmeric um, combination. Um, yeah, just to satisfy my curiosity. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, in fact, I was thinking I might bring the chart by your store if you guys wanted to post it up somewhere just as, you know, kind of, kind of a study of N equals 1, one person's experience. Right on. Interesting to people and start a conversation. I'd love to see that. Absolutely. Please bring it by. Yeah, all right. I'll chart it up. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, later. Chris. Have a good evening. Yes. Good night. All right, we're getting some great questions tonight. Yeah. Um, so talk to me. I was listening to that, and I was trying to figure it out myself. I was thinking, okay, well, capsaicin is frequently used for pain relief. Turmeric is used for inflammation. CBD is used for all of the things. Um, but that's really impressive. Um, and, I mean, obviously, this is anecdotal. We don't know anything else about what was what was going in and out of the same system. Right. Um to find that something like the the PSA test would reflect such a such a marked difference in such a short period of time. Yeah, is that familiar to you, considering like um, research with CBD products? I have seen that with the research that I've looked up, um, <laughs> and it's great to hear more testimonials like that to see. And yeah. When someone introduces it, like, I don't want to give the impression of people that CBD itself is a cure-all. It is supplemental. It mm -hmm. is a supplement. That's what the classification is right mm -hmm. now. And so for Chris to tell us all of the things that he used in conjunction, at, as you said, uh -huh. individually on their own are greatly beneficial. And it's nice that you don't have to worry about utilizing something like CBD with another natural approach too. Right. That there isn't going to be a drawback with using CBD with these natural remedies that we've known for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Yep, that is one of the things that I'm really excited about when we take a look at returning to more natural, um, natural healing agents, um, you know, is so much of what I see people suffering from are the effects of so many different drugs that they're taking creating other problems and then they're taking other medications to fix those problems and then those have side effects and then they're taking something else to treat that side effect anyway <laughs> um it's one of my least favorite aspects of kind of how we do um western medicine these days um and i think that getting into some some of the stuff that i learned you know when i left um when i left pharmacy and i started studying alternative therapies that was definitely one of the things that impressed me the most yeah um was moving into and finding those those complementary um, treatments, things that can be used together that are going to improve outcomes. So um, I'm really excited, and we'll go ahead and we'll share that information again. I'll ask Ian to go ahead and add it to the uh, the live stream as well. Um, and this was an anecdote that was shared with us by our caller talking about having his um, PSAs drop dramatically after using a combination of turmeric capsaicin and CBD um, and his other recommendation was to avoid dairy. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, some, a bunch of a bunch of questions. Great, they, they, great. They, Go they, ahead, give it to a us. A lot of people don't want to call in, but they do. They do. Uh, we'll go and feed. One of the questions, and I think we've covered this, but one of the questions um, someone had was, how would someone explore or determine uh, what kind of CBD they need for a particular illness or ailment? Does cultivate help make recommendations for this? Like they're looking like like a consultation. So oh cool. yeah, we do. We will absolutely have a consultation with someone. Not just myself, but I try to make sure that everybody in our staff is extremely knowledgeable and 
has at least a, a basic knowledge of different medical conditions that could utilize CBD in conjunction with some of their other medication. And we'd love to have consultations. And we are fully versed on the differences between isolate and full spectrum. And we can show everybody the uh, the differences between that, as you can clearly see with the chart that I have. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I want to test. I'll do testimonial. Is, is that I, that is that was my experience when I when I was there, and and I, and I, one of my frustrations was I told I already shared with you that when it first came out, I bought like some head shop from a gas station head shop some crap with bath salts that made me freaked out. Uh, so then I wanted to go to a place that I could trust, and I, I felt like I could trust. Now, you already mentioned Elwood Thompson's has mm -hmm. a, 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 a section there that they've opened up to try to capitalize on this, but they have zero product knowledge. They were more interested in making sure that they weren't going to steal their products, I think. Yeah. They were like, guarding the, the case. They really had nothing to offer. I mean, I love Elwood. I've been going to Elwood since the 80s. They had nothing to offer whatsoever as far as any practical knowledge. And so that was one thing I really came to appreciate when I was at your store. So I just I shared that but in, in reply to this this query. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the binder of information that I brought with me, this is the one that's from our store. Mm -hmm. But since you said we're so, we're, we're so close. close. The wheel, the wheel. There's the wheel. Since our store is so close to your station, I was able to swing into work, pick up that binder that's on my great. way here. So, um, And I don't know if we've done this already, but may I see your water bottle again? Sure. Because I want to give, um, I, when you're done with that, and if you want to show folks... I did, yeah. did you already show that I on did, the camera? You know, I'm not sure how well that's going to show up, but it's a lot. It's, it's a, a clear water bottle. What's the milligrams in this water bottle? There's only five milligrams in that, so uh, if somebody needs to have like a little bit of improved focus, to take a little bit of the the edge off, something like that could be perfect for that type of situation. And you know, going going back to what you're talking about, the differences between THC and CBD, bringing up something like anxiety, you know. Everybody used to think that using something like marijuana will, without a doubt, help with stress and anxiety. But as we're, we're exploring more of the nitty-gritty information from uh -huh. a medical standpoint behind treating something like general anxiety, depending on the terpene profile and the strain, some, some strains could make somebody's paranoia worse. We all know that, that smoking cannabis could increase paranoia. Well, thankfully, CBD can can help somebody out even if they've ingest too much THC and become paranoid. CBD will actually help bring that person back into a relaxed state. Mm. Um, so w if somebody who suffers from extreme anxiety, you know, unfortunately until we're at a point where a customer can come into a store like a dispensary, know exactly what strains do what, mm -hmm. what are the terpene profiles, what, what are the uh, potential medical effects that can come from each strain, until we get to that point, it's really like hitting a moving target and being in a crapshoot trying to treat your anxiety with straight THC. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things that I want to mention, because um, it came up in, in uh, well, a couple of different things that have been said tonight. Um, folks who have listened to my show before know that I don't think of conditions like depression as an actual mental illness. It's a, it, it, it has its own function. It's not a mental illness. That's just me talking. Um, <laughs> um, however, um, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about really does kind of intersect with things that we would normally classify as mental illnesses. So we would go see either a psychologist or a psychiatrist about, maybe we'd be seeing a psychiatrist and taking medications for some of these conditions. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, I guess the thing that, that got me earlier, maybe it was when, um, when we had a caller that asked questions about Tourette's, maybe that was what kind of spurred it on. And you talked about um, the uh, positive effects of using CBD for general anxiety. Um, you cited a study from the National Health Institute from 2014 talking about social anxiety and OCD and stuff like that. And one of the things that I can recall um, not to get all reefer madness on you or anything, but one of the things that I do recall is, um, and I think that it's just good sense, is that, you know, while we like to follow this whole stereotypical ha-ha-ha idea of smoking a joint and a stoner is just going to kind of chill everything on the corner, there's, uh, there are 
whatever whatever quantity i don't know the percentage but there are people who when exposed to that it's going to have a really negative side of you know negative impact Absolutely. Um, um they're going to have some sort of psycho reactive reaction you know reaction that's going to be really not good well anything that could that could flood the frontal lobe with dopamine right. could triggers different forms of psychosis right you're for the weed weed Yes. Yeah, yes. Not yes. CD. Not to be confused with hemp. Okay. Um, but that's my question, really, is because we are talking about using these things, and we're getting, you know, getting kind of close to that line. Like I said, there's a part of my brain that can really rationalize and accept. Okay, well, I can use this cream that might reduce the pain in my neck, and that feels different than taking something internally, hoping to affect my brain. Right. Um, <clears throat> so to that end, because at least in our country, the way that our, um, the, the financial end of our medical system works. Um, in order for someone to be treated for these various conditions, they're going to need to see a certain kind of doctor and take certain kinds of drugs. Um, what, is that, what does that transition look like? If somebody wants to move away from pharmaceuticals and then start considering like, and then at what point, I'm trying to figure out what my question is. Are there are, are there any physicians in um, the rich, the greater Richmond metro area that you know of that are comfortable discussing stuff like this with their patients and making recommendations? Absolutely. I've, okay. I've had customers. Now, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a list of the different physicians mm -hmm. with me, but our customer base includes registered nurses, doctors, okay. um, psy um, psychiatrists that okay. we have that – Obviously, from them, from their personal standpoint, they're advocates of it. But I've had customers come in with an actual prescription okay. written out. And, I mean, everything that we have in our story is over the counter. So yes. I do tell them that there is a difference between pharmaceutical strength. Right. And, you know, if, especially when you're dealing with CBD derived from marijuana and cannabis, yes. that's going to be more of that pharmaceutical grade because you need to have that stipulation. Right. Um, but it it is uh, – there are doctors out there that – are open to the conversation. My okay. my own doctor, they know what I do for a living. Uh -huh. And so last time I went in for just a routine physical, they told me how much they're interested in like having CBD products. And they said, oh, we love to have that we have a patient that works somewhere that can supply that. So there are, for okay. your listeners that are curious and would love to consult their doctor first, don't be afraid to bring it up. Okay. Because it is hemp derived CBD is a completely legal product. And from most of the customer feedback that we get that do consult their doctor as well, n nine times out of 10, their doctor will say, Hey, if it's working, go for it. Okay. So since you mentioned that you have had uh, some patients come in with prescriptions and they're being prescribed what was just um, legalized last year, um, something that's actually derived from marijuana right. so it contains higher potency of thc than what's available in the product line that you carry correct but you said that you have had some some of your um customers have come in and they've been able to satisfy some of their needs with i don't want to call them lower grade but what's the word i'm looking for from like a hemp derived grade from a hemp derived product that that you are at, sure Mm -hmm. It doesn't contain those higher levels of the psychoactive ingredient. Right. So they're still able to treat their condition without the side effects that come from THC? Correct. It will help. Okay. It shows some positive signs to it. Okay. I mean, we do tell those people the distinction. We let them know. We want to be completely transparent with everybody. Um, and that, but I still am able, once I get into that consultation with them, once they're in the store and if they're, if they're comfortable telling me what, they went to their doctor for um, for that prescription. Mm -hmm. There is there are some products in our line that until they're able to get that prescription filled, they could see the pos the potential benefits from utilizing CBD with our product line. So even though there is a distinction, someone can still at least experience those benefits, even though what we carry is not the pharmaceutical grade that those prescriptions were written out for. Okay, okay, great. That's good to know. Um, and. I just thought of another question. Oh, go. 
We're going to let Ian take a turn, and we'll see if it comes back to me. So on this package of gummies that you brought, I, I see that it has a, a label on here. It's pretty cool. It says lab tested. So if I was a customer and I came in and, and wanted to buy this, I said, hey, do you have the lab report on this? Would you like to be able to provide that for the customer? Absolutely. I carry, uh, as well with our binder of information, I have a binder of lab results. And we have all of that readily available. And I've freely handed that out to customers. I'll make a copy of our lab results because I'd rather have somebody feel comfortable right. and know that what they are taking has been tested for quality assurance. Right, and, my, and the other thing is, is I took two of these 45 minutes ago. I feel very focused. I feel like my ADHD just dissolved. I feel very focused right now. I don't know if it's related to this, but I feel really more focused than normal. Well, there there are signs that improves cognitive function, and I can say, you know, if if I'm if I'm working the store and if I'm like have to be alone on a weekend or something, I will definitely have some gummies readily available for that customer flow, so I can transition from consultation to consultation. I mean, from a personal standpoint, I have noticed that my thought process is a little bit clearer. Right. I don't have so much mental fogginess. And that could attribute to getting a more restful sleep like I've been experiencing by utilizing CBD on a regimen. But I do feel a, a burst of sociability and, um, like I said, a reduce that mental fogginess. Yeah. Cool. So um, I have a question. I want to go back to the endocannabinoid. Endocannabinoid system? That one. <laughs> How do you know if it's cannabinoid or can can cannabinoid? I heard it two different ways. So. Can, uh, well, it's cannabidiol, like you said, for what CBD stands for. But then the endocannabinoid system is the regulatory system. Uh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Endo cannabinoid. Cannabinoid. That is the one that's inside your body. Endo. No, not endo. Cannabidiol is the name of the chemical that lives inside the hemp plant. Correct. Yep. Yes. Okay, I got them. Okay, so in the endo cannab. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, okay, so here's my question about that system. I'm trying to figure out the right way to ask that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were describing it earlier as though perhaps one of the reasons that we're seeing increased incidences of a variety of illnesses or, or uh, health conditions is that this system is depleted, emptied. Mm -hmm. Interrupted. My question is, once you start putting stuff in the system, um, <laughs> things are rated by milligrams or some sort of dose, you know, to help you figure out something but each of us is going to have a slightly different system right correct yeah okay okay so given that these different components exist in different concentrations in different products or yeah products um your system your receptors your receptors are only capable of accepting as much as what is full right correct yeah exactly so so if you were to consume too much, they would just be discarded. Your body would just, I don't need that, and it's just gone? And that's what causes the drowsiness. Like, that's your okay. that's your body telling you that you've consumed too much CBD, okay. essentially, okay. Um, at one time. Now, the research studies that I've mentioned before, when they had to focus in on, on people, even those human studies, they will give them about, like, 300 milligrams of CBD just to be able to study that. That is unusual, of a dose because uh -huh. that's extremely high. I mean, that would be like you said, eating that entire bag of gummies, essentially. Um, that will cause someone to be a little bit drowsy, but for their research purposes, they needed a very strong dose to get right. that immediate. But what CBD does, taking it on a regimen and making sure it's in your bloodstream at that continuous rate, uh -huh. then the oil itself gives a 24 hour period once you hit your dose. Um, and that's why, since it is a like a fat soluble molecule, uh -huh. uh, using it with a carrier oil like hemp seed oil sublingually, that's what gives you that almost twenty four hour effect. And playing with you know talking about dosages, you know it's it is everyone is going to be a little bit different. Uh -huh. I mean, for the most part, most CBD users take anywhere between fifteen to twenty five milligrams. That's really the most common dosage threshold. Based okay. in that is that a daily dosage? Yes, it okay. is. Um, based off of for like an oil regimen. Okay. For the um, and that is for the most part for even taking into different pain levels and weight. But I myself, I take forty milligrams a day. 
just because I have, I mean, working in the store, I'm, uh, I feel like my endocannabinoid system is very active. So I might need a little bit stronger of a dose than if somebody's endocannabinoid system is completely dormant itself. I worked with 25 milligrams okay. for a good while, but once I started playing around with my own dose, um, once I hit 40, I was using less of the supplemental things like the smokable products or even the topicals. That was enough for me to be um, to feeling good on a daily basis. Okay. And then my other question about... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. See, that's just going to lead to other questions. But um, <laughs> so... So like I said, um, just like it is, you know, if you take too much vitamin C, your body just kind of discards the excess. Right. And that is waste. Mm -hmm. Somehow that just is, is, is a waste product for your body. Is that similar to, similar to what you're going to see with um, CBD? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. All right. And then, the, I don't know. See, the, the other thing that I'm trying to figure out is... Because, um, how do I, is that English? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm trying, I don't know how to ask the question. So, um, so if you're, yeah, go ahead with yours, because I know you had something else. I still haven't figured out, like, I'm just trying to figure out how it works. I don't so, know. Yeah. So, uh, we had someone by Gemini Maggie who's asked a question. Uh, this, you've, uh, you've disclaimed you're not medical advisor. So still, I am wondering if there's any data on CDB negatively, and people refer to it as CDB oil, but it's not just oil, right? Right, it's okay. it's in a lot of different products as well. Products. Mm -hmm. It's not just oil. So is there any data on CDB negatively interacting um, with other meds or herbal supplements um, someone may be taking? Oh and yes, there is. There is research out there. One of the, um, one of the biggest uh, types of medication that we say to err on the side of caution, and, and you, without a doubt, discuss it with your doctor, is if somebody is prescribed a, an extreme blood thinner like a Coumadin or a Warofen, uh -huh. uh, CBD will increase the effectiveness of something like a Coumadin, and oh. you don't want it to... No, you do not. No, you, no, no, you, do, not. you do not. <laughs> so I do say that there is, and even things like um, anti-anxiety medication, that enzyme in our liver that absorbs the chemicals of the pharmaceuticals, uh -huh. um, if people take their CBD at the exact same time as their prescription medication, uh -huh. there is a chance that that enzyme chooses one over the other okay. to absorb. Right, that so, makes sense. So we tell everybody, obviously, always consult with your doctor uh -huh. and don't be afraid to because there are a lot of doctors out there that are receptive to this. But we tell people that if is from what we've seen from our research, taking it about two hours in between, just to make sure that one is absorbed before mm -hmm. the other, okay. then everything needs to be um, to be effective. But okay. again, feel free to consult with your doctor uh, in all cases if, okay. you, if someone feels uncomfortable. I think I figured out how I want to ask my question. So handy, we soaked up enough time there. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm thinking: is you know, um, so much of I think what you're describing as. What, what ultimately leads to effective treatment of a variety of conditions by utilizing hemp-derived CBD is really going to be from the cumulative effect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so that really gets back into the whole thing about like uh, figuring out what it takes to, quote-unquote, fill up your own endo cannabinoid, cannabinoid <laughs> system. Um, is that is that the goal that you really kind of want to fill up your empty system? Yes. Okay. Yep. And so is that pretty much trial and error for folks to kind of come in and go, okay, let's see. And then you just kind of keep doing it until it feels good. And then you're like, that must be it. Yeah. From what, I, from what I've seen <laughs> from myself. It's a little different than going to the doctor and he says, you know, take three of these. And well, a little bit because you do have that consultation right? afterwards to see like if we need to tweak as right. needed. So it is similar to that. Uh, what I've noticed just from my own from my own personal experimentation with it and from uh, talking to our customer base, that if you start taking a CBD tincture, the oil, uh, wait, uh, take it for three days consistently uh, and see and really listen to your body. Think if, if you feel like, obviously if it's making you drowsy, you're taking too much, mm -hmm. and you can scale back. But if you feel like it's just touching the issue but not going far enough, 
feel free to increase the dose and mm -hmm. not don't double down, you know, increase slowly. Really take an, an easy approach to it because no one wants to just feel drowsy um, when they don't want to. Uh, but three days really is the, the timeline because even for me, I wanted to just go cold turkey with my CBD. I wanted to see if, you know, was, was this the anti-anxiety all in my head? Was it just, you know, just my own thoughts? Was I convincing myself that this was working because I work at Cultivate Wellness? Well, when I stopped for three days and didn't take any form of CBD whatsoever, edibles, nothing, I quickly realized why I took it on a regular basis. My social anxiety was uh, in, insane. I couldn't really have a full gone conversation with anybody, eye contact. I noticed everything that plagued me before came back full force. So I will never stop taking it on a regular basis because I don't even think I'd be able to have this type of interview <laughs> if I didn't have it. You're doing it. a great job. Wow, wow. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's had such a positive effect for you and that you found solutions for yourself. Yeah. Um, and I imagine that that was a part of your journey in discovering like this is so meaningful to you that you want to get out there and be a part of this and share this with folks. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's really exciting. That's really exciting. Uh, so we are going to be here for about another nine minutes, folks. If there are any more questions out there, I want you to give us a call real quick. We are at 804-464-1089. My name is Stephanie. This is In the Frequency of Hope. You're listening to WRWK 93.9 FM in Midlothian. You said the number fast. Which one? 93.9 FM? No. <laughs> the telephone number. Ian says I'm talking too fast. The telephone number is 804-464-1089. And I'd love to have anybody give us a call uh, if you've got any further questions for James tonight. Um, I don't know that I have any more questions for you unless there's something magical happening in the binder over there that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> um, no, actually, I think what I would like to do is to mention a couple of these things. So um, you were talking about, so you've got some topical treatments that you're going to use for pain or for skin conditions. Correct. And then tell me what I saw tea. Tell me what you do with tea. Yes, do <laughs> and have. I noticed it because I'm a tea drinker, but I didn't buy any because I'm not because I'm because I'm because I'm wimpy so far. I should have brought some there of that go. too. I should have made a list. <laughs> so the CBD, so the CBD tea, and we even have CBD coffee and the CBD water as well. Think of those as supplemental. If somebody okay. needs a dose in the middle of the day, what I've noticed when I because I'm a tea drinker as well, uh -huh. I love black tea. That is what I pretty much run on. Uh -huh. um, what was interesting utilizing CBD in conjunction with a caffeine product, which my customer base has let me know that doesn't that seem like an oxymoron to have something that relaxing while energizing at the same mm -hmm. time. Something like that could provide that, that energy boost without the jitteriness typically associated with um, caffeine consumption as well. Uh, so something like a, a CBD tea, again, you're getting approximately, depending on the depending on the flavor and strength, anywhere between five to about 13, 15 milligrams of CBD per cup. Um, it's just that little tiny dose that someone could need in the middle of the day to help with, again, those uh, panic, pan some panic attacks or a pain flare up, any of those situations. Okay, interesting. Um, and uh, because we are running very low on time, I do want to get back into um, asking you again, because you mentioned it, that you guys have space in the back and that you do some yoga on site. Yes. Uh, so I'd like to tell, I'd like to have you, well, maybe we're going to take this call and then we're going to talk about yoga before we go. How okay. about that? Sounds good. So we're going to start off with our caller. Hello, caller. Thank you. What's your name? It's Chris again. Uh, Chris again. Hey. Hey, Chris. Hi, Chris. What you got? Well, uh, I just heard you say that a lot of doctors are willing and, um, my, uh, my oncologist, more or less just fired me uh, two weeks ago. He said, stop sending me emails. I'm not going to prescribe anything outside of the standard of care, which is radiation and Lupron, and, uh, which is a, a, a variation on androgen deprivation therapy chemo for prostate cancer. So he's not willing. I'm like, there's not a search box that I have seen that you can check off says, you know, CBD friendly. So how do you find all these alleged doctors that are willing to work with him? What's the way to find them? I mean, from right now, uh, we don't have a list currently developed. Uh, I would like to have something to provide our customer base so that they can feel comfortable before they just go into uh, a practitioner's office and just 
approach the conversation. Um, so yeah, for right now, there isn't a list, unfortunately, where you can see all of them uh, as plain as day that would be able to have that conversation. So right now, um, either I'll know of them because they're customers of ours, or um, or I know them in my personal life too. Uh, for your right. situation, yeah, unfortunately right now where we're at is it's going to be a little bit same thing, trial and error. If you go in to see a new doctor and if they unfortunately have the reaction that your previous doctor had, um, that's just extremely unfortunate. But I would like to, you know, if, if there's anybody in the medical uh, medical profession that's listening that wants to reach out to us. I'd Particularly love, if you're an oncologist. <laughs> right. I would love to start developing relationships so then we can we can promote them as well. With or you could call into the station tonight and we can hook you up with Chris. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. I'm definitely shopping. Right. Okay, well, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, we'll definitely put some information even on the live stream about that, that, that we would like to get information about physicians in the Richmond metro area that are um, willing to talk about or um, recommend CBD products. Hey, hey, Chris, do you do yoga? Yes, Ashtanga. Astanga. Okay, so that's perfect. We'll use this anyway. as a segue to get back into yoga because I was just asking James, they, they offer yoga over at um, Cultivate Wellness, and so I was about to ask him uh, a little bit about that. Yeah, so we, right. do, we do have an event space in our store that we do events like CBD yoga. That's one of our most popular. Um, it is instructed by Shannon that you all met. She is a certified yoga instructor, and she's our wellness coordinator as well. So we do have different classes, um, different workshops that – uh, aren't just CBD related either. We do have a holistic approach with that um, things like herbalism classes. Um, all of those events are right now listed on our Facebook page. Okay. So you can get uh, some insight into what they do. But we want to have that class space as another way to show how you can incorporate CBD into a natural holistic approach to health in things like yoga. What exactly is CBD yoga? So essentially what you would do would be a very um, intro level yoga class. So if anybody's never done yoga, don't be afraid. You can still try it. Uh, they'll typically either make CBD tea or they'll hand out gummies. Mm -hmm. uh, it will help just relax but also improve um, flexibility as well and different range of motion. Okay. So the CBD with it being the um, – that deep relax, uh, that relaxant, and also too helping with those uh, muscle spasms and muscle. That's spasms well. really interesting. Yeah, uh, that's neat. Did you hear all of that, Chris? Yes. That sounds like that would be really cool to check out. And so he mentioned uh, uh, his uh, web page or his uh, Facebook page, and I just want to remind the listeners. I'll put a link to it. Uh, I'll try to put a link to it on our Facebook, but it's Cultivate with a K. So if you're looking for it, it's Cultivate with a K. Yes. Uh, and I'm just going to give you guys a little bit more information before we go because we are just about done. I'm sorry, Chris, you're still there. Do you have any other questions? Uh, that's it for now. All righty. Thank you again for calling in tonight. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Sure. Yeah, look forward to checking it all out. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. Uh, so... I want to make sure that you guys have contact information if you would like to check out Cultivate Wellness. I think Ian is going to put something in the live stream about it, and James is going to tell you where to find the store and the phone number. Yeah, so our store address is 13140 Midlothian Turnpike. We are in the same shopping center as uh, Peking, Kabuto's, uh, School of Rock. We're set back a little bit from the turnpike. Uh, if, if you know where Pescado's is, it's in the same shopping center. Yes, we are great friends with Pescado's. Yum. Uh, <laughs> and our phone number is 804-464-2238. And we are open seven days a week, typically Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Sundays 12 to 6. So if you are in need of CBD, more than likely we're open. There you go. Uh, any other questions tonight, Ian? Uh, no, I'm just so glad to have this in our community here in Chesterfield, right down the street from the station. It's just so exciting to have a business like this. It's you know, I I went to middle middle, middle school uh, in Chesterfield and kind of lived here on and off a lot of my life. I never imagined that they would have cool things like WRWK and cultivate wellness on Melissa and Turnpike. That's just <laughs> I never foresaw that. Well, it's a nice it's a nice change in the right direction, and uh, yeah, I thank you all so much for allowing me to be on your platform and to reach out to your audience as well to talk a little bit more about CBD.
thank you so much for coming in tonight. Uh, Richmond, here we grow. Um, and we're going to close out the show tonight. I will talk to you guys again next week. Next week, my guest will be Valerie McLeod. She is the founder of We Stand Undivided. And we'll be having lots of uh, discussions about less divisiveness next week on In the Frequency of Hope. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Again, this is WRWK 93.9 FM in Midlothian signing off tonight. Uh, and here is the end of the show. It's a remarkable amount of boldness yes. um, from a, a a young woman in 1918 Almost talking a, to a male authority figure. Almost but, a girl. Yeah. I mean, she's just she's just 